Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. All right, Tuesday, just a little bit after lunchtime here in Australia and the market has retraced ever so slightly. Uh, well, actually, 0%, so it's right where it was. I'm pretty sure this was 2.18 trillion, something like that. So a tiny little bit, so the market has just stalled a little bit. Look, Bitcoin dominance, though, continues to drop. Now we're down to 42%, and we did see a pullback from Bitcoin at that $50,000 level. It was kind of, you know somewhat uh, expected uh, I wasn't you know completely sure we we're gonna do it but I thought yeah it'll probably be some hard resistance we'll fall back down before we finally make our way back up and that is what's happened again you know not unexpected I thought it might be able to get up to 52 and just breach above it but 50k seems like that hard barrier at the moment and you know fair enough it's one of those sort of hard barriers you know those solid uh, numbers you know 50,000 100,000 things like that they will generally be hard barriers to get through you might jump above them for a very short period of time like a day or a few hours and then you fall back below them now not all the time and that's not financial advice uh, but that is what I've seen in my time in the space all right look volume though is up so nice eight percent volume a lot of money coming in BTC price again just under that fifty thousand not too far off couple of hundred dollars but hoof gas prices look out jumped up out of nowhere not exactly what sure what's going on there but it might have something to do with a story that I'll bring you very shortly and I won't give it away just yet but let's have a look how's the markets doing again bit of a mixed bag it sort of says here that it hasn't really moved but you can see there's a number of coins that are down a little bit but then there's a few that are up a little bit as well so what's been the best performer in the last 24 hours all right oh Swiss ball very nice move so 17.5 percent again the volume is up so there's money coming in KuCoin doing nicely engine coin Luna I mean that just continues to rocket on I wish I had to put more money into it I literally only put it just a couple of hundred dollars into it and it's you know doing extremely well and I bought it you know on the dip but you know I wish I had to put more than just a couple of hundred dollars in but that's life look it's still up uh, I have it staking so it's earning me some rewards and I'll probably just leave it there and wait till the next bull run and kind of see if it does anything by that stage all right, uh, Tezos. God, you don't hear much about Tezos anymore, but making a bit of a move. Sirecoin, BNB, Amp. Look, I mean, lots of, you know, good single-digit gains. So, you know, plus 5%. And then a couple of even nice uh, double-digit gains, which is pretty good, with the highest being that 17. What about losses then? What hasn't performed so well? Because there's always, you know ones that aren't doing well even if everything else is doing well so there we can see phantom down a little bit near protocol the graph algorand cell even maddox had a little bit of a pullback so there you go but look nothing too major the biggest uh retracement or correction whatever you want to call it probably not a correction it's a retracement corrections are generally a lot sort of heftier it's only down 6.5 percent and my guess is phantom over the last probably seven days or month or so has probably performed extremely well like just about everything else has so again bit of a sort of not a stag stagnant market exactly but just you know traveling sideways uh, and that means no one's or you know the selling and the buying are kind of evening uh, each other out now what we need to look at though is this so this is the total crypto market cap look where we are sitting around that you know one point you know seven here it says 1.6 so we're getting a retracement trillion dollar mark sorry 2.106 trillion getting ever so close to our old high which was about 2.5 uh, yeah about 2 point nearly 6 trillion so 2.58 trillion uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens you know whether we get a rejection from here as well because it's a Again, old support resistance things. I think we probably get up to a roundabout here, have a bit of a pullback before we then surge through and come back and use it as support. That's quite often what we see happen. But we aren't too far away from it. We're literally only, you know, sort of half a trillion dollars. It sounds, you know, like, oh, only. That's uh, quite a lot. But, you know, in the terms of how fast these markets can move and how much money is truly out there, we're not really too far we could possibly see us getting back to that within the next week or so maybe even the next couple of days I mean I don't think it'll happen in the next couple of days I think we're probably about a week or two maybe away from getting to that uh, old all-time high for the total market cap but things happen pretty fast so it could happen pretty fast now Bitcoin let's go and have a look so again we got up we can see here 
we were at, at 50,500 and then we got uh, a pullback straight away. So it's not a correction. Again, these, this is what I call a correction. This is a bit of a correction, but then these kind of things, this is just a retracement. Corrections are something that are generally a bit bigger. You know, we're talking 15, you know, 20% sort of plus, that would be a correction. Anything that's sort of five or 10%, that's really just a retracement. So at here, we've got a little bit of a retracement and Bitcoin is just hovering around that 50K level. It's going to be that little bit of a psychological barrier. But again, we're going to come to some news stories that I think are going to probably be part of the reason why things will continue to pump. All right. Number one, Tether. Love them, hate them, doesn't matter. Tether have started printing again and they've been on pause for two months. And the one thing we know about Tether is when they turn the... Pre uh, tether the printing machine on and it starts to go brr the markets start to fly so tether issue of the world's largest stable coin usdt has started printing again after a roughly two month halt that sparked investors concerns and speculation that's what people are worrying about but tether has come out and now they're getting audited uh, they've had i think two audits one internal and one was done by an external uh, auditor so you know maybe they've got their act together we can only hope and things are on the up and up from here because you know traditionally when tether starts to print the bitcoin price starts to move that's why it is people are coming in and they're buying a whole stack of uh you know turning their fiat into tether and then they go out and buy the market particularly the asian markets they've been really big on tether so are they starting to come back now because china had that big crackdown on bitcoin mining and going to get into a story about that shortly as well they're probably going to regret that in the long run. But don't get me wrong, I'm sure they'll make it quite attractive for people to uh, mine Bitcoin in the future, but they want to get their stable uh, yuan going first. All right, USDC as well. They came out the other day and said that only 61% of USDC was actually backed by cash. Well, that's about to change. So stablecoin USDC will be backed 100% by cash and short-term US treasuries by September, the developer circle announced. So again, this even had people worried, you know, Tether wasn't completely backed uh, by fiat currency and everyone thought US stablecoin USDC was, came out, turned out they weren't, but now they are actually going to back it 100% uh, by stable coins. And I think a lot of that has to do with regulatory pressure. Uh, I get the feeling like the US government has said, hey, look, if you want to get regulated and possibly, again, th these are the rumors, nothing's confirmed, but become the new, uh, you know, sort of digital currency for the US. So rather than bring out their own Fed coin, this will sort of be their Fed coin. I think that's what they've said, that you have to be back to one for one to get you know that regulatory compliance and then may become may then become the de facto stable coin for the sort of entire world because basically most of us are all working off you know america uh, the american dollar uh, even australia's got a lot of american dollars we don't use them day to day but a lot of uh, the bigger corporations and that have american dollars they are you know the the you know the backbone of the financial world you know the us dollar and if that's to continue, and particularly if it's going to be USDC, I would say that is what the government has said to them. So that's why they're heading down this way. But look, that's also bullish because now there can be no, you know, qualms about, you know, whether they are or aren't, you know, properly backed by September. It doesn't say exactly when in September, whether it's the 1st or the 30th, but they will be fully backed. And I think that is when you're probably going to get news at some stage in the future that USDC is now the US dollar in the digital form because fiat is disappearing I'd, you know i'd be lucky if you see fiat in the next five to ten years i think not financial advice just my personal opinion and i think that'll be almost worldwide but we'll have to wait and see things may change because originally people were worried about uh you know the pandemic uh being able to be passed on by handling money and things like that i'm not sure if that's true anymore all right Crypto punks had a bit of a surge today and it's because multinational payments giant Visa said that they per they purchased a crypto punk for $165,000 and they have to do it in Ethereum of course. You can't really buy them in dollars, you have to, you know, buy them generally in Ether or maybe USDC or something like that. But this has just it's almost legitimized 
some of the uh, NFTs. Now, not all of them, you know, there's so many NFTs out there and majority of them, unfortunately, literally, I think probably 90% plus of them, they'll be worth nothing in the future. They're just sort of collectibles that are a little bit of fun. Crypto punks, on the other hand, I think they really will be, yeah, they're going to be like the Mona Lisa, you know, of uh, NFTs, you know, in the NFT space. They'll be the originals and they'll be the ones that people are really going to want to hold on to. And Visa has come out and purchased one and that saw a spike in crypto punk purchases. So they got number 7,610 out of the 10,000 different crypto punks that are out there. So again, this space, NFT space, it really is being legitimized. Uh, again, I've, I've kind of missed it uh, and I'm all right with that. I you know, invested in the coins that they're kind of sort of being built on. So hence like Ethereum, uh, Audius, they're looking to get into NFTs in the future. Uh, I have some uh, Chili's and they're going to do NFTs and things through their uh, sponsorships of sports clubs and things like that. So that's where I've gone and put my money uh, and completely missed out on these, you know, unbelievable 100x, you know, 1000x gains on NFTs. And, you know, that hurts a little bit, but that's the way it is. I can't be across everything. Uh, no one is, and so I have missed that, but I am glad this space is doing well. But I do say buy, be warned. There is some NFTs that are going to do extremely well. Majority of them, like a majority of cryptos, they just end up trending to zero and they'll be worth nothing. So if you're only spending a few dollars here and there and it's because you love it and you know, you're not expecting to make any money out of it, awesome. But if you're going looking for these random NFTs thinking you're going to flip them and make hundreds and thousands of dollars, uh, you know, I hope you can, but in the long run, I think most of them will yeah, trend down to zero. All right, Poly Network. So it seems like the drama is over. As the heading says, the hacker has finally returned the remaining $141 million. So that's good for everyone that, you know, lost their money in the Poly Network hack. And good that it's finally all returned, like literally all the money. It'd be interesting to see what happens with the hacker, you know, I get the feeling like there was a pause with the money because it was probably put somewhere where it may have earned some interest and things like that and the hacker has maybe got some money that way. I, I don't know. And, you know, look, I won't say fair enough if the hacker's done that, but, you know, if the hacker's been able to at least uh, get rewarded in some fashion, they were going to give the hacker uh, some money to do it and they're also offering the hacker a job so or hackers, whatever they are. Uh, I'm not saying they really deserved any money, but I suppose for the work they put in and nearly having themselves locked up, uh, yeah, you know, hope, no, I won't say hopefully there was some reward for them because that's not really what I mean, but I suppose if they get a reward for it and with all the money still returned, then, you know, I guess we can less, what's that uh, saying? We can let sleeping dogs lie, I suppose. Whether the long arm of the law will uh, agree with that and whether they maybe come after them later, who knows? But it is good that all the money's been returned. So I'm happy for all the people that lost their money and should be getting it back. Right, so this is where things get interesting. Google Trends has Bitcoin interest far from its yearly highs despite Bitcoin surpassing $50,000. So Google Trends and even Ethereum Trends at the moment, cryptocurrency trends in general on Google are quite low, yet the price is rising. That is because the retail aren't really here. Like, you know, I'm still retail and if you're watching this, you're still retail, but the rest of the retail, you know, the people who are literally going to FOMO in at unfortunately the worst times, they all left. When it started to go down, they probably sold for a loss, got a little bit burnt, and unfortunately, a lot of retail is not going to get back in until they hear that Bitcoin is well above its old all-time high of 60,000. They're probably going to be, what? Bitcoin's now at 75,000? My God, I'm getting in. This is going to a million. And, you know, if they buy and hold long term, you know, hopefully it does go to a million. But unfortunately, short term, short to mid term, they're probably going to get burned. And that's unfortunate, but that's the way it works in all markets, unfortunately. But the crypto markets are much more explosive. But this says that if you're here and you're currently hodling, we still haven't seen that blow off top yet. We haven't still seen, it'll probably be even around 100,000 when people hear that Bitcoin is, you know, 90 something thousand dollars. You know, people who don't understand trading and all the rest of it, they're going to be flocking to probably buy Bitcoin at $100,000 and who knows how high it could go. I mean, are we, is it possible we see that, you know, 100 and, 
you know, eighty thousand to two hundred and eighty thousand dollar Bitcoin this cycle. Yeah, it, it's hard to know. Uh, you know, if we can actually do that, but it wouldn't surprise me because the true mania will come when it's basically at some kind of, you know, well overvalued price. And that is the sad fact that the new money is going to have to come in and, uh, you know, probably get burnt. Hopefully they buy and hold, but most likely they'll buy and then sell for uh, a loss uh, or think they can hold for long enough. And when it gets down to such a low point because they bought at such a high point, they literally will sell for nothing. And that is, you know, the capitulation of the market right there. Again, I hope not. And if you're watching my channel, you know, hopefully you understand that cryptocurrencies are highly volatile. They can soar so high, but they can dump so low. But if you're in a good project, no one has lost money in cryptocurrency if they've stayed in for at least four years in good projects. Not shitty ones. Shitty ones go to zero or you know almost zero and they do lose money. But particularly, let's just say Bitcoin. We'll focus on that. No one has lost money in Bitcoin if they've held for a minimum of four years. If they have held for a minimum of four years, no matter what price they bought at, they have usually seen amazing returns. People who bought back in 2017 at sort of nineteen, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000, that would have been really hard watching that $19,000 turn into $3,800 because that's where they probably would have wanted to sell and think, this is going to zero, I'm just going to get out you know, my $3,800. But if they held, they're now sitting at nearly $50,000 from $17,000. They've nearly tripled their money. And they did triple their money when it was at $64,000. And again, if they tripled their money and got out, you know, congratulations. But the longer you hold Bitcoin, traditionally, the better the returns get. And now that's starting to happen with a number of other cryptos. I won't say a lot because most of them haven't been around long enough, but a number of them have. Uh, Ether continues to go up. Litecoin continues to go up. It's not doing as well against Bitcoin, but Litecoin does continue to go up. It broke its old all-time high. It's sort of well under there right now. Uh, XRP continues to go up. Uh, NEO, I don't know how NEO's doing. It did go up. I don't think it's broke its all-time high of something like 200. Uh, so we'll leave NEO out. But that's a couple of coins right there. And now things have changed where there is big institutional money. You know, we have cryptocurrencies that have real-world value. And that is where the crazy gains are going to come. But yet there's little... Yeah, there's no, not a high lot of interest at the moment. That says, and again, you add that with the tether, tether news that Tether is starting to print, I get the feeling like we're going to see some explosiveness over the next few weeks to possibly months and maybe even you know almost a year if these lengthening cycle uh, theory proves out to be true. I don't know about a full year, but maybe another still possibly six months from here, we could see just, yeah, mind-boggling gains. Never financial advice, though. All right. Also, Bitcoin, Bitcoin transactions historically low levels despite the bullish price and the outlook. It's because people are buying and just holding. Not a lot of people are really selling Bitcoin. Now, I'm not saying no one is because they. Uh, this article goes on further to say down below here that some coins that have been held for quite a while are starting to be sold, but it's usually just a little bit. I don't think anyone thinks 50,000 is near the top. I think most people think 50,000 is probably about halfway to where the top is, if not even a third of the way to the top. So yes, there's always going to be someone who's going to be taking some profits. You know, someone who bought Bitcoin at $3,000 and it's now worth 50,000. Yeah, why wouldn't you sell some? Of course, people who bought it at $5, $15, $100 and now it's worth 50,000. Yeah, they're probably selling a few just to make a little bit of profit here and there and then reinvesting it into other things. There's always going to be someone who's selling Bitcoin. There's never going to be a stage, well, well I won't say never, but so far I don't think there's ever been a stage where no one is selling Bitcoin. All right, Iran, and we were speaking about how China had banned uh, crypto mining or at least made very stringent rules on it. Iran is now about to lift its Bitcoin mining uh, restrictions next month. They have seen the writing on the wall. They may not like Bitcoin and what it stands for and what it's about, but even they know they can't get left behind. This train is starting to move, and if you don't get on it, it's going to be really hard to try and catch up on it. You may catch the tail end of it if you're lucky, but a lot of people will miss out on it, and Iran, 
they can see what's coming so they are lifting their bands and they're just going to make sure they're on top of it and they're getting all their cut and all the rest of it no country is going to want to be left behind even china they didn't completely ban bitcoin mining they banned uh unregulated ones and things like that so there's definitely still bitcoin mining happening in china but it is just heavily regulated uh by their you know the local governing uh, authority you know the ccp uh chinese government and all the rest of it iran was going to ban it because they probably thought yeah it's all a scam but now they can see what's happening and they're going no we actually need to let this happen and get on top of it and be at the forefront of it all right last but not least ftx man they are just absolutely they're going to be a behemoth they are going to be so they're already big they're going to get even bigger so ftx buys the naming rights to cal memorial stadium for 10 years in a 17.5 million dollar deal now that's after them buying the naming rights to miami heat arena in march so they are really getting out there doing the sponsorship thing to try and get heard and drive that mainstream adoption and i really do think ftx is going to be a behemoth in the future a lot of big backing behind it uh you know they're getting out there again the miami heat uh and now the cal memorial memorial stadium very very interesting times i think we have a lot of upside to go that doesn't mean we can't have retracements we're going to it's not basically going to be one linear line from here to the top uh, and no retracements we're going to have 20 maybe even 30 percent retracements before we get to that true peak uh you know blow off top and when that happens uh, and when that's going to happen i honestly can't tell you i don't know i play it day to day i just go by the feel and how thing how far you know things have moved up and all the rest of it and the news i take you know that holistic approach to absorbing information and making my decisions on when i'm sort of planning to sell some i don't really have price targets as such don't get me wrong if i get a feeling like something's looking like it's uh, done well then i absolutely will take some profits but it's more uh, based on time but also there will be some time like if bitcoin hits one hundred thousand dollars uh, i'm absolutely going to take some profits am i selling all my bitcoin not a chance i will just sell a little bit of it to you know recover my initial investment and things like that but yeah i'll never sell a whole lot of bitcoin and i couldn't imagine there's going to be too many people who will considering that the institutions are here and the institutional adoption but hey i tell you right now if bitcoin gets to two hundred thousand dollars i'll probably be selling uh, a good piece of my bitcoin stack short of that I don't plan on selling too much at all again a few bits and pieces here and there but i'm just a hodler you know i'm a hodler baby <laughs> all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another you should all be on that game train at the moment and i'll see you next time